but I got no. Welcome to another Dead Donkey production video. Uh, today we in the park, we vibing. Uh, you see I got the little dead cat on the mic, but I'm gonna do some nice interesting concepts today for a lot of my beginner filmmakers out there. Those who are not used to using darker skin tones for subjects, you know, maybe where you live at, it's a little colder, it's a little more European-ish. But we're gonna vibe out, got my little uh, subject right over here, but you ain't got a pan, you're gonna see it in a second. And then we're just gonna vibe. But remember, if you like everything that you see here today, including the LUTs, any colors, the color correcting, I will be selling packs eventually. But let me know in the comments down below, but let's just dive right into it, you feel me? Okay, so you see in this shot in particular, um, she's mostly just sitting here on the park bench. Now, obviously what you don't see is that I have Michael, who has been in a couple videos before. Um, he has a five in one reflector disc. So what I use mostly was like, you know, either the white end or the silver end. And then when I use a little bit of the gold, but when I get there, I'll kind of show you how we use that when we do it. So let's kind of just get into this close up so you can see a little bit better. So in this one, you see this is a close up of her face, right? You see her face, for the most part, you still pretty much see all the features, but we're kind of moving the, the white end of the five in one reflector disc, giving her a little bit more light to her face. Now, when you're working with darker skin tones, you want one, a little bit more light, but also you want soft light because the thing about darker skin tones is it's not best to usually blast them with tons and tons of light but also you want softer light because when it comes to darker skin it seems like we have better roll off when it comes to the skin because of the way our skin absorbs light and then even from this angle you see we're using the silver side so the silver side isn't quite as soft as like bouncing the light that's coming technically from behind her to the front but it's still soft enough to the point you can see the difference in her face when it comes to the light and if I, I'm gonna pause the frame right here, you can still see a little bit of that glow. And then if I put on like the IRE charts where you can check for exposure, for example, you'll see where a lot of the green that's kind of giving her the edge behind her and like the pink that's hovering above her on her head, it's also starting to transition because we're bouncing it back onto the side of her face. But visibly, it doesn't look that way. But according to the IRE chart, you can see like, it is being put back onto her face and you can see the difference in her face. So doing stuff like this can definitely help. Now this one, we're not really using much of anything like the five, five and one reflected disc. This one is something I think I've kind of, I wouldn't say I've developed, but something that I use that most people don't realize is that you can have your subject sometimes wear lighter color shirts to bounce light back onto their face. It's not a whole lot, but you can see it's a little bit later in the day. So her shirt is actually providing some of that bounce from like, you know, the ambient light from the sky, the sun and all that stuff kind of filling in some of that shadows as well. Now this one in particular, uh, you can see the sun is obviously setting, so it was peeking through the trees just enough. And what we did was, once again, use the 5 reflected disc to bounce some of that light back onto her with the white side. And ultimately you see it's filling in some of the front of her face. And same kind of function with this one. You see it's kind of giving her a little bit of edge in terms of the direction the light is coming from. At this point, it's a little bit later, but it was a little bit more cloudy. But at the end of the day, the whole point is you can do things like have your subject wear lighter shirts to help lighten their face. You see, it's not too contrasty on her face. It does provi uh, provide a uh, soft bounce light and it kind of fills in and makes her skin look very, very appealing when you're doing something like this. Moral of the story is mostly just when you have people of color, your main function or your main thought process should not be to flood them with so much light because don't get me wrong like it can help in some situations but the the moral of it is just simply not only to provide a little bit more light but also to do it in a way that's very soft and pleasing to the skin because it's not like our skin can't bounce off any light at all it just requires a little bit more separation and our skin provides natural roll off so you want it to look good look natural but you don't want to blast it with too much light and it can definitely make a difference in your um in your films or any kind of interview you're doing with people who have darker skin, uh, just use a little bit more light, but making sure it's soft and making sure that roll off looks really good on their skin. It makes a difference. Even if you visibly may not see a drastic difference, as you can see, according to the camera, it does pull those little small differences when it comes to contrast of skin tones that are dark.